Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Glad to have you with us for another reaction video. I'm Phil. I'm Sam. And we got another comedy reaction for you today. Got a lot of those, so if you haven't subscribed, you should probably do so. Because uh, we keep coming with that fire. No, well, it's actually a lot of the comedians that are coming <laughs> with the fire. And we just happen to really enjoy it. So if you do yeah. uh, enjoy comedic reactions, we got a lot of those. And uh, lots of other stuff as well, music, sports. But today we're doing somebody that we haven't done before in the comedic range. And that's uh, Marlon Wayans. Wayans? Mm, Wayans? Yeah. Wayans, I think. I think it's Wayans. Um, yeah, he, I mean, I, I remember hearing his name growing up a little bit. Um, I think he was in some movies, like scary movie. Maybe. Something when like that. I think of him, I know him from White Chick, the yes. movie. Yeah. And um, that TV show, him and his brother were. Yeah, yeah. So I've never heard of stand-up before. No, me either. Um, so this would be interesting. And I guess he's coming out of nowhere, unless he's been doing it for a while. I haven't heard about him doing stand-up or anything like that, but obviously this looks like it's on the heels of the Will Smith Jada saga. Um, and uh, so I have no idea what this is, but it seems like it's relatively new and from him. So I figured we might as well check it out and see yeah. what it's all about. So, I'm here for uh, it. So yeah, you you ready then? Yeah. All right. No no thoughts to add. Nothing. I mean, I didn't know he was doing stand up either, but I honestly don't know much about him in general. Like aside from like I said, more of his movie TV show career. Yeah. Um, I think he was doing stand up like alongside a lot of the movie stuff that uh, he was getting okay, into. Okay. 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 True. Cool. Yeah, I've never seen him do any of that, so I'm interested to see how this is. All right. Well, let's get it. Jada Pinkett Smith. Since I was 18, 19 years old. I met her backstage at a Living Color, my brother Stevie's show in the 90s. And um, I walked in his dressing room and I saw her. I saw Jada and I was immediately smitten. Like this woman was so smart, so knowledgeable, so multi talented. She could sing, she could dance, she could rap. She could write poetry. You know how people say, I've lived five, six, seven times. She's been here five times, and she probably lived to the ripe age of 127 each time. <laughs> Jada Pinkett is Cleopatra. She is Joan of Arc. She is Helen Martin from 227. This woman. <laughs> and when I saw her, like I seen that face, and I immediately was like, oh my God. This is the most beautiful Little boy, I have seen. <laughs> no, cause she, she ain't got nobody. Y'all know this woman. She ain't got nobody. She ain't got no titties. She got nipples, but she ain't got no titties. <laughs> you know what I mean? She ain't got no ass. She got a crack in a hole. We know she shit. But I don't know how she sit down. She must keep sliding till she hit. The hook on her head. It's like, all right, right there, it's good. <laughs> and I immediately got a number. Me and Jada became, like, best friends. Like, I moved out to California. She lived a couple of a minutes from me. And I spent the night at her house. She was staying night at my house. We just hang out like two innocent little kids. And this woman was so smart. She used to teach me about love. She had power words and descriptions of love when she was 19. She was telling me shit like, love is acceptance. Yeah, it is. Love is unconditional. Yeah. Love has no expectations because then you will be disappointed. Love involves devastation. Love is forgiving and real love is healing. It just kills me because I can hear these people yelling in the yeah. background and be like, yeah, it is. Preach. And I know he's going to come with a punchline in a minute that's going to just rip, rip all it this apart. stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah. And also, so much for keep my wife's name out your mouth. Seriously. Now every, it's in everybody's mouth. Uh, Forgiving and... I was going to say the butt of every joke, but he just alluded to she has no butt, so... <laughs> love is healing. Do you know how hard my little 19-year-old dick was hearing these big power words? But I never told Jada I had a crush on her. I never did. I just, I was always like, you know, I used to play her little songs with like little, little hints in them. I remember one time I played her Stevie Wonders, Too Shy to Say. And then she played me back in Vogue's Never Gonna Get It. 
We just became best friends, man. And I hung out with her so much. She used to, we used to write poetry and we share the poetry. Her shit was so like, she had sim similes and metaphors and shit that public school didn't teach you. I was like, and me, my shit was basic. I was like, I think you pretty. Can I suck your titty? <laughs> I know it's itty bitty, <laughs> but that would be litty. <laughs> I was like, it was funny, like, like we hung out so much, she, she felt so comfortable with me, like, I became like her gay friend, you know what I mean? <laughs> like the gay best friend. I don't trust gay friends to pretty girls. Y'all niggas ain't gay. You are undercover straight, you lying motherfuckers. Cause I played that part, I was like, bitch, let me see your clitoris. <laughs> oh, girl, you gonna wear in the hood or out? Oh, look at that shit, gangster. Your clitoris, gangster. <laughs> Can you teach me how to suck dick on my dick? Come in. <laughs> oh, is that how you do it? <laughs> oh, get off me. Oh, that's nasty, bitch. <laughs> I love me some Jada, man. <laughs> I did one day, Jada called me up and she said, Marlon, come through, nigga. We about to take this relationship to a whole nother level. And in my head, I was like, oh my God, Jada's gonna fuck me. <laughs> I drove over that house so fast. I... She goes, Mom, I wanna introduce you to someone special. I was like, oh, she's gonna fuck me with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I said, where's she at, where's she at? Right here. And I look on the couch, and who's sitting there? Tupac. But the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, Will Smith. <laughs> oh, I was so mad. I was hating. Because Will has always been a grown ass man. This, I don't think this nigga ever went through puberty. He was born with a chest and a mustache. This nigga has literally been a handsome man like me. I, it, I just went through puberty probably two years ago. <laughs> he was sitting there just looking like fucking the Prince Charming. And he was sitting there and he was laughing. You know that, you know Will, that phony ass laugh. You know, you know. <laughs> and Jada, she just laughing. Ki, 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 ki. With her little frog legs, just all dancing all over his lap. And he would laugh and they would kiss back, back. <laughs> and he would tongue her down. And then give me that mean ass Will Smith smirk. That nigga knew what he was doing. Yeah, I had a crush on her. And that motherfucker knew. And I remember leaving that house that day heartbroken. And I learned that love is learning to let go. Because I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, what they had, their connection, that's some shit you see in the movies. Like in those romantic comedies where you go, oh, what? yeah. That man was her prince. And I couldn't compete with that. They had this connection, man, their spirits was dancing. And they would go on to get married and to be an example for all us black people. You know, we all look to those couples. That shit's important for us as a race to be able to go those couples that stick it through no matter what. You know what I mean? Not just on TV shows, but in real fucking life. The Barack and the Michelles, the Jay-Z, Beyonce. You know what I mean? The Will and Jada, that shit means something to us and I, I, I gotta respect that. She would help him amount a fortune of damn near a couple of hundred million dollars. They made these two beautiful children. I don't know what planet them niggas is from. <laughs> But you know what I mean? They are special. Them little, I don't know what gender they are. Like, them gender <laughs> neutral, race unspecific. I don't know if they Puerto Rican, black. I don't know if the boy's the girl and the girl's the boy. I don't fucking know. <laughs> All I know is that they don't speak like normal people. They are brilliant. Brilliant beyond their years. These niggas was born in the Matrix or the Metaverse. <laughs> These are not children. They are avatars. <laughs> but those little... Kids, 
are special. And I know why, because their mama's special, their dad is special, and I had to honor that. And for years, I, I'd be hurt, you know what I'm saying? I'm 50 years old now. I was wondering how old he was in this. He doesn't look that old. No, I was just thinking he does not look 50. No, not at all. Uh, he looks good for his age. Um, I'm surprised at like we're eight minutes in, and I, it was not what I was expecting. I thought he was going to be going in a little bit more... Like roasting more? Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel like he's more of like a... It almost reminds me of... Um, when uh, Eminem got dissed by Machine Gun Kelly and it was like halfway a love letter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I feel like. It's, you know, he's kind of giving her a lot of compliments at the same time as roasting yeah. her a little bit or giving both of them. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean you know, I guess everybody's not going to approach it the same way Chris Rock did, clearly. Yeah. But uh, interesting to see where he kind of finishes off with this because I feel like he's still kind of building up to something a little bit more in terms yeah. of... You know, still got a couple minutes left, guys. So. Yeah, well, I just feel like he's kind of talking about, you know, them as being cu couples, but it seems like a little off because you're like, well, there's a lot of stuff out there that makes yeah. you think maybe they're not setting the best example as a couple. a couple, right? Yeah. Let's see. I'm 50 years old now. Single, still ain't found my queen. And I sit there and I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn, maybe, maybe that was the one that got away. And I asked God, I'm like, God, show me a sign that that woman wasn't for me. You know, March 27, 2022, approximately 10.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 7.32 Pacific, God showed me that that wasn't the woman for me. <laughs> Because my woman, if I'm worth a couple of hundred million dollars, my woman ain't gonna let me do no dumb shit like that. <laughs> my woman's gonna be like, mm -mm, nigga, don't you fuck this money up. Don't you fuck this money up. Nigga, we got a lake in our backyard. I'm not about to swim in a public pool. Sit your ass down. <laughs> my woman gonna grab my leg like, please don't fuck this money up, please. No, I don't want it. Please stop. Please. Listen, I don't like Coach. I like Chanel. I know I pronounce it channel, but nigga, don't you fuck this mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because, ladies, there's a point where you got to stop your man from doing dumb shit. That man has worked 50 some odd years of his life for that moment. Do you know what an Oscar award is to a black actor? In 94 years of the Academy Awards, there have only been four black men, four black men to ever win Best Actor. And Denzel won that shit twice. So really three <laughs> niggas. <laughs> so in that moment, sis, I need you to grab your man's hand and go, mm-mm, baby, mm-mm. Don't you do this for me. This is your moment, not today. Not today. <laughs> But Thursday, we whooping that little skinny nigga's ass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened to Will. It looked like he was enjoying the joke. Right? He, went and he cracked the joke. Will was laughing. That phony ass laugh. And then Jada rolled her eyes and her head like, you nigga. And he went, yeah, that shit ain't funny. <laughs> I think she put a spell on that nigga. She had a men in black voodoo doll underneath her chair. Cause that motherfucker out of nowhere, he just changed his whole shit up. So we saw her roll her eyes up in her head, but that ain't what she did. She put a spell on him. She went. <laughs> and the ghost of Tupac Shakur possessed Will Smith's body. And then he said, nigga, we're sorry. <laughs> back to the seat. That wasn't Will's walk. That, nigga, that was Tupac walk, nigga. I know that duck leg walk, nigga. That duck leg walk, that's how I work with Tupac. That is Birdie from above the rim. Nigga got out the range. <laughs> that is Bishop from Juice, nigga. I know that duck leg walk. Look at me, even the way he was screaming from his seat all ignorant and shit. 
like Tupac on one of his diss records. Keep my wife's name out your motherfucking mouth. That shit sound like first off, Eastside, fuck the click the claim. <laughs> What were your thoughts? I think it was different than I was expecting, like you said, but I think he had a lot of funny, like funny bits in there, and I definitely got a good laugh in, so. Yeah, I think it was good. I think uh, it was, like you said, different. Um, I think for me, I was hoping that he was going to go a different direction with where he was taking building the Jada Will stuff. Yeah. It was funny. I like I liked the Tupac stuff that he did yeah. in there at the end. That was really funny. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was like, I just feel like he did what... Chris Rock didn't in letting Jade off the yeah. the you know off the hook yeah and making it all about Will because yeah. uh, clearly you know he did something stupid and yeah. you know like he made the point there valid point that you know what was he thinking going up on stage and do that you could have handled it so much 100%. differently and that like if and he made the point well yeah well, Jada wasn't for him and all that but as we know I think Jada is like the underlying reason why all this stuff has yeah. happened so. Yeah. So I was hoping that he was going to roast Jada a little bit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was hoping yeah. for a little bit more. I think what he did, though, like, and I mean, who's to say, you know, what? I, we don't really know his relationship with them. So I think what he probably, yeah, what he probably did was, like, tried to, like, still have a bit that was entertaining and funny, but, like, not step on anybody's toes too much. Well, he said he, like, he's probably her friend because, yeah. you know, the living color thing or whatever, yeah, right? Exactly. So, has a little more of a history there, and, uh, yeah. whereas Chris Rock has no history at all, and, and, you know, if he does have a history, it's not a great one. So, anyways, I, I liked it overall. I thought it was good. It was different, um, to hear from Marlon, you know, we yeah. haven't heard anything from him. I thought his delivery was good, too. Yeah, and he's got a lot of energy, and, yeah. uh, you know, Especially he's always had a lot of energy. As far as far as I can remember. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like he's like a young guy anymore. No. Right? like he's fifty, and he's. I still thought he did a really great job. Yeah, and for him, you know, who knows? He could be using this as getting people to kind of check into him, right? Mm -hmm. Without stepping on too many toes, like you said. Yeah. And but trying to take advantage of the opportunity at the same yeah. time. So it was yeah, good to it. check him out, though. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed our reaction. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button for us. Helps with the algorithm. Helps you get the content that you want. And we hope you subscribe and come back soon and check out our next video. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.